However, I, I, I quite agree with that concept, but my argument is if you've got a ring, you still have the thing of you've got somebody here and somebody there, blah, blah. I mention it, not because I particularly agree with it, but it is a way, it is a model of managing an area. I just happen not to agree with it because I don't think it actually does a great deal. But what it does do is give you an opportunity to have a different pricing structure for each ring, i.e. the further away you get from your base. But it still doesn't solve this business, whereas the quartering or the sectioning does. Okay? If you haven't already done a diagram of that, i.e. home base, circle round it and section, please do it because you might not remember this bit, whereas if you've got a graphic illustration of the point, then you will. Okay. Now, I want to get in touch with you, but you're busy with clients. You're either at a host salon or host business, or you're working on your clients in their homes or in their offices. When do I get to speak to you? How can I make an appointment? Do you try and bring me back while you're driving along from one client to another with your diary, you know, on your lap or next to you? Are you sounding all harassed on the phone? So how are you managing your communications? And under communications, I also mean things like emails and stuff, but let's particularly focus on the phone. It may well be that you have your mum, bless her, you know, she picks up the phone for you when you're working, and she's not doing the overing. But what you might want to consider is, uh, employing is the wrong word, using the services of a professional telephone answering service. Now, these people, you, you agree phone numbers and, and stuff, but these people answer the phone as if they work for you, with your um, company name. So in, in my case, it would be, they would say, um, good morning, GMT Tech, how can we help? And it's nothing to do with us, really. And they can take your bookings, they can tell them a little bit about treatments. Obviously, you spend some time with them at the beginning. And the impression it gives to um, an existing client is they've chosen the right nail technician. But also, the impression it gives to a potential client is, hey, this is really business life. Now, that, if you do a Google search under telephone answering companies, something like that, there'll be loads and loads and loads and loads. I did look into it once for a customer, and the average fee per month was £35 for a small business. Okay, that's under £10 a week. And how much business are you losing <coughs> at the moment by missing calls? And I don't know if you know from your phone how many people have just rang and not left a message with support. <coughs> Excuse me a moment. Sorry about that, I'm just getting over a throat infection. Swigging out of the bottle. Why change a habit of a lifetime? Okay, so do give serious consideration to managing your mobile communicate, well all communications, but particularly your phone communications, and what your current communications are saying to me as a potential client. If I was to ring you now, because you've obviously got all your phones switched off, because you're at a very important lecture, so if I was to ring you now to book an appointment, what would I be hearing? Put yourself in the... In the, in the um, in the seat of a customer. Okay, so managing communications is vital. Managing the future. Where do you want your business to be? Where do you want to be in five years' time, ten years' time, fifteen years' time? Is having a mobile business a means to having a static business at some time? Are you using it as a means to build up your client base to earn enough money to then afford a static business? Or are you quite happy being mobile? Is your plan to then have other mobile operators and you to manage them from your home base and not to go out yourself? Now, probably you don't know the answer to that. But you need to know where you want it to be. And we'll be looking at that in more detail in a moment. You need to manage the future. Everything to do with the business needs to be managed. It's 
no good just reacting to phone calls, reacting to clients, going out and doing the service and coming back. That's being reactive. You need to be proactive. Okay? Okay, costs. Do you know what your costs are? Do you know how much it costs you to do every single um, service on your um, menu or your treatment brochure? Now you might say yes because your suppliers say to do a full set of acrylics it costs £5.75. But is that including a little bit of couch roll? Is that including tissues? Is that including nail wipes, cotton wool? Is that including the bin liner? You need to account for every single thing you use in any service that you do and cost it. Because otherwise, how do you know if you're making any money? It's absolutely no good you charging £15, it costing you £10 plus more to pence a mile. And it's 10 miles away. Probably clearing £2.50. Well, you're not going to have that beach bar in the Bahamas, are you, on £2.50 an hour? So know your costs. I said four to pence a mile, you need to get on the AA or the RAC website and see what the current price per mile is, which includes petrol, wear and tear, depreciation, servicing, and it gives a figure for every mile that you travel. That's what you need to be charging, not petrol. There's far more to running a car than your petrol costs. You might want to work back from how much you want to earn. Because once you know how much you want to earn, say per, and then work it back to what it is per hour, and then you know what your costs are, you know what to charge out at. And remember, as a mobile operator, or sorry, as a mobile client, I have no costs in getting to you. If I were to go to a static nail studio, I've got to get myself in the car, 40 pence a mile. Or I've got to use public transport. I've got to hang around in the cold and the wet. If I'm using my car, I've probably got to park. How much is that? So you are saving me money and me time by coming to me. I should pay for that. But what do you say? Oh, my mobile. <laughs> Know your costs. Marketing, we're going to come to a bit later, so I'll, I'll just um, leave it at that for this moment. <coughs> so. Marketing is really anything that impacts on your customers. So pricing, communication, your offering. But what you need to do, from the point of view of managing your business, is identify the customers that you want. Find out what it is that they need, give it to them, and please make some money. Because if you don't make any money, you're going to go bust and you're not going to be able to help anyone. But how do you know you're making a profit if you don't know what your costs are? So, we're going to look at it a little bit more detail as I say at marketing, but that's it in a nutshell. So, a bit of homework for you. Who are your present customers and put them into groups? Who are your present customers and what are the services they're having? Who would you like them to be? Have you got a lot of people that come in for a trim and a polish? But really you'd like somebody coming in to a, for a full set of gels and maintenance every two or three weeks. Are you doing a lot of stuff that isn't earning you any money? So you need to put I'm going to come on to that. You need to put your clients into three groups. Your most profitable clients, your averagely profitable clients, and your least profitable clients. Generally speaking, the ratio is highly profitable, averagely profitable, least profitable. We don't want these. If, however, you find that the least profitable is up to here, <laughs> then we've got some problems. But you don't know who is the most profitable, averagely profitable and least profitable until you've worked out your costs.